Hello, everyone. Okay, so I think we are ready to go uh, with today's session. Uh, welcome to the first uh, part of the Bose Olympiad, uh, first part of the senior uh, boot camp in the Bose Olympiad. And if you do not know what is the what is going on right now in this uh, broadcast, uh, in this live session then this is the first of the three uh, planned session this is session one of the three planned sessions on the post olympiad and they are this is session one this is this one is suitable for class nine and above some advanced class eight people can also join that's fine and in this particular uh spring Bose Olympiad there are two rounds the round one is the individual round and the round two is the team round we have some previous awardees also participating in today's uh, in this this time as well so that's great as uh, I mean that's great to see that and uh, in the in the team round you will need four friends it's a team of four each team is contains four people and those four people can be you and three of your friends you can ask your friends from your school or maybe somewhere else they can also participate in this together okay so there are two rounds of this now today we will be and those of you need help with registration they can go to chinta.com and register for this uh, okay so i just give the link sir? here yeah uh, sir after going to chinta.com how to register for the team round yeah team round up uh, only after the individual round we will let you know about the team round first uh, 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 after the individual round so yeah. when will this be held and uh, please tell details about this yeah about we, this? We, we, this will be held in the middle of april we will declare precise dates in some time. Uh, yeah, here is the. And sir, uh, another thing, uh, please, uh, that um, yeah. I want to say that uh, will you please uh, let these details uh, of this individual round and team round be known as G in, in Gmail? Yeah. It will be very helpful. Please. Yeah. We will be sending out an email to all of you with the precise dates. Okay. All right. So this session will be recorded as are uh, all of the sessions. So we, we will be starting with a little bit of geometry today. And some of the things that you already know, but I'm uh, since this is a camp, we want to review some of the stuff which will be useful in the main main event. So when we talk about geometry, there are three things that we really 
discuss one is points and straight lines points and lines the second thing is triangles and the third thing is circles so we are actually doing one of these three things one of these three things now sir, i have another question to ask uh, that so the link which is sent in the chat uh, what will happen when we click on it stranger we have only 45 minutes for this session can hmm. you reserve all these technical questions for the admin people okay okay let me focus on the material okay all okay right. okay sir all right so we have this uh, these three types of stuff that we actually invest our time in and one more thing we are kind of interested in is the locus of locus or the path traced out by moving points traced out by moving points so one example of path traced out by moving points is if you have a point p let's say we have a point p and we have a moving point q such that the distance of q from p is always 5 cm so q p is fixed p is fixed q is moving such that the length of qp is always 5 cm so this is a very simple example of a uh, uh, locus or the path traced out by a moving point as you all know this will be a circle this will be an example with a of a circle of with 5 cm radius things can be a little bit challenging when you make two points fixed suppose we have two points p r p and q fixed and there is one moving point let's call that point r such that so the the given information is the distance between p and q r is 5 cm so this distance is 5 cm p is fixed q is fixed and r is moving r is moving such that rp plus rq is always 4 cm okay so those of you who are just giving answers in the chat i would strongly suggest please wait and raise hands and then let me choose you and then you can answer okay because everyone is thinking so let's not ruin that for everyone okay so we have uh we have two points fixed points p and q and the point r is moving on the plane and the point r is moving on the plane such that there is two pieces of information distance of p and q is 5 cm and rp plus rq is 4 cm now i want to see raised hand for people who want to respond to this i'll go to shorodeep and ask him that what is the locus or the path traced out by the moving point r shorodeep can First, you tell first i us? have to say that this is not possible because of triangle inequality this is not possible because of the triangular inequality why because even if you because take because rp plus rq is always greater than pq as rpq forms a triangle rp plus rq the distance of r to p and distance of r to q if you join them this is always greater than the distance from p to q why is that because if you go from p to q directly or if you go from p to q via a different point clearly directly going will be shorter right that's the definition of a straight line going directly will make things shorter so pq is the shortest path between p and q so pr plus p rq will be a longer path so clearly rp plus rq will be greater than pq which is greater than 5 but we are told that the rp plus rq is 4 so there is no such point 
R which works. So the locus is empty. That means there is not even one point which has this property. Okay, what if I so change due to this triangular inequality? Due to the triangular inequality, yes. What if I change this and I say, okay, RP plus RQ is five centimeters? Don't uh, answer right away. Raise your hands and I will ask you to respond. Okay, I see there are raised hands already. I'll go to Abhinit Sharan. Let's go to Abhinit Sharan. Abhinit, what do you think is the locus of the point R if in this particular case? Okay, so Abhinit is saying it's nothing. I'll go to another person. Let's say Amit Malik. Or Shrinja. Yes, Shrinja, go ahead. Uh, sir, empty because the length, sum of lengths of two sides of a triangle cannot be equal to the third side. It will be greater. Okay, let's go to another one. Uh, I will go to Aryan Prakash. Aryan, let's see what you have in mind. Yes, sir. I will lie on the line PQ. It will be the line segment PQ. Exactly. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, sir. It will be the line segment PQ. Why is that? Notice that if you take a point R on this line segment, then RP plus RQ will be exactly equal to PQ. Isn't it? That's the property of all the points on this line segment. That RP plus RQ is equals to PQ. So it will not form a triangle. In fact, it will form a, some, some, some sort of a degenerate triangle. Degenerate triangle means you can think of it like this that Area zero. the yeah the, the point vertex is sort of coming down and sort of degenerating into a segment finally. Okay. So that's what the degenerate triangle would mean. Okay. Exactly. So it is a peak, it's a segment PQ. Okay, let's change it one more time and let's make this six centimeter. What if RP plus RQ is six centimeter? What is the locus of the point R then? So we have raised hands again. I will go to, let's see. I will be going to tech toppers. Who is tech toppers? Oh, that's God. Yes, sir. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Pragyan. Okay, hello, Pragyan. Tell me what you think is the locus of R. Uh, I think it is uh, this time uh, the triangle will be possible and uh, I think this is defined as an ellipse of sort of a stretched circle, I guess. It is an ellipse. Exactly. Very nice. This is the locus definition of an ellipse. It is how you define an, an ellipse, in fact. And there is a very beautiful construction of the so-called ellipse compass. So this is something that I would strongly suggest all of you make in your home. Take two points P and Q, mark two points in your notebook, which are five centimeters apart. Just to make the experiment go well, you can take a string which is nine centimeters apart. Nine centimeters long. This is a string. Now what you do is you tie one uh, you can tape one end of the string on p and the other end of the string on q and tape it you can also hold the tapes with your fingers so that they do not uh, so tape it means like take a cello tape or something a gum or something and tape or tape tape the string the two ends of the string on those two points p and q and okay, okay. hold it with your thumbs or fingers Hold it with your fingers so that they, they do not go off. Okay. So once you do that, you take a pencil, you take a pencil and stretch this, you stretch this thing and try moving the pencil, making markings on the paper. If that hap if you can do it correct, uh, correctly, then you can, you will be able to see that this will trace out an ellipse like this. So this is an example sir, uh, of a locus uh, problem. Sir, how to 
how to actually move the pencil i did not understand after you stretch the uh, keeping the string stretched you can put yes. the pencil in between the string and use the pencil so to sort of pull the string outward and once it is stretched you can now try to move the pencil on the paper keeping the string in the stretched position you have to experiment with this a little bit but you can do it try this at home and if you are unable to do it i i think you are an internal student so i'll be able to help you in the class okay so we have this definition of an ellipse that's great let's go to another locus problem another locus problem and it's like this you have a you have a you have the ground you have the wall and you have a ladder like this and there is a cat sitting at the middle of the ladder let's call this point a let's call this point b now suppose the ladder is sliding along the floor so means so it means that it's sort of slipping like this it's slipping like this maybe it's slipping like this it's it's falling to the ground okay 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 so when it hap when what would happen so what is the locus of m so if you at, if at each position of the ladder if at each position of the ladder you trace the midpoint m what kind of figure will you get in this black screen so we are getting some responses again but sir i did not understand your question actually think a little bit okay we are getting raised hands i'll explain this one more time suppose there is a ladder like this which is standing upright and suppose m is the midpoint of the ladder m is the midpoint of the ladder and then the ladder start start sliding so at each position of the ladder you keep a mark of the midpoint so suppose this is a new position of the ladder then the midpoint is kind of here so it starts sliding at each position of the ladder you mark the midpoint what kind of picture will you get if you do so okay so wait a minute okay now i'll let others think and then i will ask oritrabo to respond uh, but not right away after a few minutes after others have thought about this so i'll give a little time to all of you to think about this and then give me a response of what would be the locus of the point m in the meantime as others try this problem i will be um, so if you are not an internal uh, student of chinta then you do not have access to the genius app but for these few weeks during the during the bose olympiad we open up this access so here is the link to it and you can log in with google once you go to this link you can log in with google and i will be just logging with my gmail account and once i log in i'm going to see problems it's very important to do practice some problems from here in the next couple of weeks and you will not have access to this if you are not an internal student so you can write to support at chinda.com to get a free access for the next two weeks because you are already you have already applied for the bose olympiad so write for access to the genius app 
for practicing problems. And we will activate a free access for you. Yes, sir. What did you say? Uh, this does not apply to you because you are already an internal student. Shinder. Okay. So here we go. Now, uh, also, you can think about finding team members because just after the first round, there will be the team round as well. So you should Sorry, be. Is it mandatory that every participant in the team round should have participated in the individual round? No, it is not mandatory. No. At least one member of the team should be part should have participated in the individual round. That's the only condition. Sir, the individual round will be held on which day? Uh, we will be giving out the dates, as I said at the beginning of the discussion. You asked me this question. I told you yes. that we will let you know. Yes, sir. Uh, it will be better if you send the precise dates and every details in mail, OK? Yeah, yeah of course. Of the individual round and team round, both. Sure, sure. We will do that. Yeah? Is it sure? <laughs> yes, Srinja, we will do it. OK, so now I'm going to ask people to uh, resp give me responses. So uh, Oritrabo, what do you think? What is the answer? I think the locus of M is a circle. Locus of M is a circle. Uh, do you think it's the entirety of a circle? No, it's not entirety. It's actually, uh, what can I say? It's actually one fourth of a circle, which is just inverted. Ah, uh, right. It, it, it's, it's like this, right? It's one fourth, like this or like this. The, so the green, red one or the white one which one you were suggesting the white one actually the white one or the blue one okay i'll go to another person let's say i go to uh, abiram ayer abiram what do you think is the answer well i think this first it will be on like one fourth of a circle that's white line the white one okay uh let me go to aryan prakash one more time uh so i think it will be the red one it will be a quarter circle and it will be the red one it is the red one yeah of course so that's the answer i want a proof so can all of you so what is the answer the answer is it's a quarter of a circle in fact it looks like the red red quarter of a circle that i have drawn here okay so I think then work. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, sorry. So I think then work. Didn't. Sir, I have got the proof, I think. So oh. I think I got the proof. Okay, Mrinal Vartak is saying that Mrinal Vartak is saying something, but I don't, I'm unable to hear him clearly. Maybe he got the proof. Okay. And Pragyan seems to have brought the proof. Oritrabo, maybe, maybe he has a proof. But I will ask others to try a little bit more. And then I will ask, open the floor for the comments. So you want the proof that why the locus will be a quarter circle? Yes. I want to know why this will be a quarter circle with precise reasons. OK, OK. So uh, I think all of you should know why this is, what is happening here, okay? As you try, let me explain to you that what is the reason we have this uh, so that you can prepare for it also as well and think about it because you, are, you all are young mathematicians. You should be thinking about things like this. Uh, the way Math Olympiads are styled right now and the way they were styled in, let's say, Russia or other places like that, maybe Romania or Hungary, they, they're quite different. Right now, we think of it as just a, another exam, but the Russians or the Romanians or the Hungarians thought of it as a sport, and they treated it as such. 
So that's why the team round is very vital because we are trying to bring back that sportsmanship spirit to this entire process. And there is actually a team round in the Duke math meet. You can search this in the internet and see the problems of it. It's a very beautiful contest created by some of the greatest mathematicians of our time. It's called Duke math meet, which has this sort of a team round. So how can I approach the window of this uh, math meet? You can Google it. I just wrote the name in the chat. So you yeah. can Google it and you will be finding stuff on it. So okay, okay. that's exactly what we are trying to do. You know, uh, this is so the, the only way this experiment becomes successful is an experiment with education. It becomes only when only when you participate as a, it, it, in, it, in it as a sport, it becomes successful. So I would uh, very much like all of you to think about it, research on it and make an educated attempt on it as a sport. OK, that's what it was supposed to be at the very beginning. It's not supposed to be just another exam. OK, so now coming back to this, I will, I want to ask uh, let's say I will go to Sart Arnav Dadwe. Okay, let me go to Arnav Dadwe and ask him that why do you think this quarter circle thing is true? I'm not sure he's here or he's able to speak. Okay, maybe he's not able to speak. Murnal Varta, can you tell us if your audio permits? Uh, 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 you said uh, you said uh, in the previous example that PA PQ is. 5 and R is such that R P plus R Q is 6 M. It is a moving point. Then locus of R will be ellipse, right? That is right. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, Mrinal Vartak, go ahead. What do you want? What do you have in mind? Sir, so uh, so we can use that over here as the ladder slides down. There is a right angle triangle which is formed. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, in that, the median and the hypotenuse is half of the hypotenuse. You can use that. So the distance from B to the midpoint will always be half of the uh, length of the hypotenuse, that is the length of the ladder. But the length of the ladder is constant, so half of that will also be constant. So the distance from B to the midpoint will be constant. So that midpoint will lie on a circle in the center. You see, the way Mrinal actually said the proof it's very beautiful it's as sir, if but he was I, uh, but, but he said very fast Shreeja. sir i could not understand also actually okay okay i need to speak <laughs> so the thing is the the way he explained the proof just appreciate how beautifully he did it it is it is so precise we will describe i will describe it what he said if you could not follow it, but uh, it's very nice and it's absolutely geometric. He did not use coordinate geometry or anything. So that's fantastic. So this is what Rinal is saying. Let me just go ahead and tell you what he said in a slower pace, but he did it really nicely. So what he said is, suppose this is one position of the ladder. Suppose this AB represents an intermediate position, position of the ladder. Okay. And M is the midpoint of the ladder for sure. We want to show that the locus of M is a circle. So how can we show that? I just so intermediate. One moment, Srija. Let me finish. Then we can you can ask question. Okay. Okay. So please stay muted when you are not speaking or when I am speaking, and then I, I there is some background noise otherwise. Okay. So now let the origin point be O. Let the origin point be O. We want to show that M is tracing out, out a circular path. 
So the only way we can do that is by showing that the distance of M to show to show this show that distance of M from some point some point is fixed. Think about it. If you are thinking about this for the first time, I do have to go a little bit slow. So think about it like this. If you want to show that the point M that is a moving point is tracing out a circle, you have to use the definition of a circle. And what is the definition of a circle? That it is the locus of a point of a moving point, which is at a fixed distance from a point from another point. So what Mrinal is saying that that indeed happens at every position M is at a fixed distance from a fixed point and that fixed point is O. This is the fixed point. This is the fixed point. And he is saying that OM is constant. What does that mean? That means if you take another position of the ladder like this AB and if you mark the midpoint again M then this blue OM would be equal to the length of the white OM. The blue OM's length will be equal to the white OM's length. So the point M is always equidistant from the point O. That's what Vrnal is suggesting. He's saying this happens. Now he has a reason to say that it happens. And what is that reason? Well, he says, let's study only one of these equilateral, tri uh, this right angle triangles. Let's study one of these right angle triangles. So what is going on here? He noticed that M is the midpoint of the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. So if the length of the ladder is 10, then this is 5 and this is 5. But there is another property of the midpoint of hypotenuse. It is the circumcenter of the right triangle. So here is a property that will be very important for solving problems. Midpoint of hypotenuse, hypotenuse of a right triangle, of a right triangle is the circumcenter. That means it is equidistant from all the points, all the vertices. So it's like this. If you draw a circle passing through all the three vertices of the triangle, you can show that M is the circumcenter of that circle. That means it is equidistant from A, from B, from O. This is a homework. If you have not done this before, Show that as a homework and you can submit it to helpdesk at chinta.com. So what do we have to do? Prove this, that midpoint of hypotenuse of a right triangle is the circumcenter of the triangle. So okay. I'll write it. If you have done it, you don't have to do it again. Prove that the midpoint of hypotenuse of a right triangle of a right triangle is the circumcenter of it. Okay. Okay, and you can send it to me at helpdeskachinta.com. Okay, now that we know this, that means that M is equidistant from A, from B, and from O, which means the length of O is 5. So we just showed that the length of M is 5 from O. The distance of M from O is 5. This is for any position of the ladder. 
which means the point M is always at a fixed distance from the point O, that is five, that is the half of the length of the ladder, which, which then Renal says is sufficient reason to say that M traces out quarter of a circle. It's excellent, very nice, very nice, very well done. Sir? So, yes. Are A and B fixed points? A and B are not fixed points. The ladder is sliding. How can that be fixed? Okay, okay. As the ladder is sliding, A and B changes as well. Okay. O is fixed. O is fixed, yes. Okay, now okay. that we have learned this, let's modify this locus question a little bit. And let's say that we have a ladder L again. But this time the point M is not in the middle. It's dividing AB into one is to two ratio. It's dividing AB into one is to two ratio. The point M is dividing AB into one is to two ratio. So I'll write that again. M divides AB into 1 is to 2 ratio. What is the so, locus so, so of a, M? A M is to M B to 1 is to 2. Yes. M A by M B is 1 by 2. Okay. What is the locus of M? Again, we have the same question. That is the ladder is sliding. The ladder is sliding. At every position you try to mark the point M, the ladder is sliding at every position you try to mark the point M, which is at one is to two distance. Okay, so we have people responding again without raising hands. That clearly tells us that, okay, either my voice is not getting to the other side or I don't know what's going on. So that's great. So what would be the locus of M? This is a homework problem. We don't want you to solve it right now. It's a homework problem. So locus problems are a very important part of geometry and we will be using them as such. We want to use them as such. Now I want to stress another thing. This is so a- let me take a screenshot of that homework problem. Please show that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So. Let's go here. Yeah. Yeah. So now. So the ladder is sliding, right? Yeah, sorry. The ladder is sliding, right? The ladder is sliding. Just like the previous situation, the ladder is sliding again. The ladder yeah, only sliding. the position of aim is changed. The position of aim is changing as the position of ladder is changing, right? Okay, okay fine. Okay. So now the thing is that there are other types of locus problems that you will face. For example, there are cycloids you can study. There are asteroids you can study. They're beautiful stuff. And there are more and more and more things like this. There is a very beautiful book called Lines and Curves. Uh, I think the author is Vasiliev. We should definitely check it out. It has some very nice material on this kind of things. So please write in the chat the name of the book. Okay. I will do that. Uh, I'll do that. I'll email you. I don't have, I don't think I remember the spelling of the name. But yeah, so anyway. So, okay, sir, you can email us. Yes, I'll email you. Okay, now the thing is that we want to go to the other three things that we talked about. The locus problems are good, that's fine. We also want to talk about the general geometry of lines and points of circ triangles and of circles. These are the three other things that we want to talk about. And it looks like a general geometry problem to start with a very simple question to relate a triangle and uh, so if you have ABC a triangle, let's suppose ABC is any triangle and we draw, uh, we draw a 
line AD like this. Can you show that AD is smaller than the large max of AB and AC? It's a very simple but uh, useful situ situation when you are restricting line segments to the interior of a triangle. So you have a if you, you have a line segment no, no, AD. I did not understand what you said actually right now. Interior of the triangle that. Okay, where is AD? In the interior. That's what I said. Okay. Okay. All right. So the the question is, how can we show that AD is less than the maximum of AB and AC? That is one question that we can try to look at. The other question is, using that, what can we say about any segment like this so another triangle xyz is here suppose we have any other segment mn how can we compare mn to xyz how can we compare the leng length of mn to the side lengths of x y and z so for example can we say that mn is shorter than the largest side of this triangle so how can we rigorously say MN is shorter than the largest side of this triangle? Sir, MN is not a Savian, right? It's not a Savian anymore. It's just a segment that's connecting two points on the um, on the sides Science. of this triangle. Yeah. So we have a bunch of raised hands. Since we are and we don't have a lot of time, I'll go to one other time. I'll go to Arnav Dadwe. I don't know he will be able to speak or not. But last time I went, something happened. Arnav Dadwe, are you able to speak? Yes, sir. Okay, this time he can. So Arnav, what do you have an, a response for the first problem? Uh, sir, uh, the angle A B D. ABD, sorry, is the exterior angle of the triangle ADC. ABD is exterior of triangle. So, this one? ADB is the exterior of ADC. No, no, no. Okay. The other one. Okay, this one. Ah, that one. So this is X. This yes, is exterior, exterior of this, this triangle. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So X will be equal to interior A plus C. Okay, so let's say call it alpha and beta. So x is equal beta. to alpha plus beta, yeah. So, so x alpha and beta are the angles. Sides. Yes, yes, angles. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So x will be greater than beta. X is definitely greater than beta. I agree with that. So if if we uh, multiply with them uh, with negative sign, so x minus x will be less than minus beta. Okay, minus x is less than minus beta, of course. And uh, we add our uh, 180, 180 to them. Both sides. Okay, 180, let's add to both sides, yeah. So, uh, 180 minus x will be nothing but the uh, angle ADC. Okay. So, ADC... Or am I right? Mm, ADC, yes, of course. 180 minus X is ADC, yes. That is correct. Uh, so, uh, and 180 minus beta will be nothing but... Uh, uh, wait, wait a second, sir. Okay, I think you are going in the right direction. You we have to look at this particular angle for sure. But I don't think the exterior angle thing yes, is required. Then, uh, let me go to Aryan Prakash one more time. Aryan, what do you think? I don't have exactly have a very rigorous proof, but sir, it sort of involves imagining something. So, like if we take a circle with center A with radius AB and we draw that circle, 
and it's quite intuitive that ad will like b will never lie in that circle ad will be definitely less lesser than that radius if we draw that circle no why would that be you could always draw ab and maybe put d here but this d will be outside the triangle right yeah you can do it like this right but then sir it's greater than a, it's less than ac that's yeah, why you would magnify yeah. it from ac right so that then is... we just do the thing same thing with ac and then it has to be lesser mm, than ac that might work but i think it could be easier in some sense this could be accomplished a little bit more easier way so anyone else okay let's see i'll go to aritrabo once more sir i have taken that which d divides bc into a is to b ratio then by stewart's theorem we can say that the line segment ad square is gets equated to that's too much no we are not going to <laughs> uh we should not use big guns here or travel let's i i see what you're saying it's uh, appreciated but i think we can do it in a much simpler way let's go to shourodeep once let's see what he has in mind mm, after we got x is greater than beta i can directly say that ab is greater than ad uh, the, the the theorem i am using that for some angle suppose here in this case adb which is x then the opposite side will be greater than the smaller angle then the side which is there with the smaller angle in the opposite side i mean for angle adb here the opposite side is ab and if i take angle abd suppose it is um, gamma then the opposite side will be ad since gamma is less than x then ab will be greater than ad there is a proof for this as well so the we cannot compare x and beta because they are part of different triangles yes they have to be part of the same triangle to apply this kind of argument okay mrinal but oh, okay. let me go to you let me go to you one so, more time sir so, uh, so my proof is like at least one of angle uh, is ADB and ADC will be obvious. Ah, now we have, now we are talking. So, if ADB and either ADB and ADC are both ninety degree, that's possible. So, if yes. they are both ninety degree, let's take that case. If you draw a perpendicular ABC, if AD AD is perpendicular. Then ninety degree is the largest angle of any triangle, right? So yes. the side opposite to ninety degree will be larger than the side opposite to a smaller angle. So that is easy to understand. The ninety degree case. If none of them are ninety degree, then you can. Then one say, of them will be. Uh, one of them will be greater one, than ninety. One of the angles will be obtuse. Yes, one of them will be greater than ninety, and as Minal pointed out. one of them will be less than 90 so he would probably say that without loss of generality we can say that x is greater than 90 so in that case in this particular triangle this is the largest angle which means the side opposite to it will be the largest side because if a, if one angle is larger than 90 all other angles will be smaller than uh smaller than it in that triangle so you see it's a very simple but beautiful proof and uh, it uses just case case investigation which is a interesting tool in geometry uh, remember to do three things first check out the panini 8 the genius app because you would want to practice problems ask in the support for uh access if you don't have it already for the next two weeks okay so that you will they will give you free access to this as a first thing the second thing is look out for team members and try to understand uh duke math meet and the philosophy behind the sport of math olympiad so that we can do it in the right way and you can also suggest some some things that we can do there are students from all around the world few students but students from different parts of the world are participating in this 
if we can do something nice it will be a good thing okay take care everyone sir, i'll see you guys next sir, week yeah sir sir yes uh, sir after uh, after clicking on duke math me to we, we can see uh, the problems and the philosophy also yes yeah, certainly yes we can and sir another thing that uh, today actually i was having another class in the afternoon so i could not attend the 8 to 8:45 boss olympiad uh, boot camp so will you please uh, tell me where the recording can be found you should attend only one of them srinja you are in which class right now uh, sir actually i was in class 6 but i have just promoted to class 7 okay then you should have attended the previous one this one is a little bit harder for you but that's oh. okay Uh, you should attend the other one okay the middle one oh okay sir but if i attend this will be there any problem yes because this is not your right batch even if you do well in the contest you will not get the prizes and you will not be oh. attending the re relevant one that's a problem 